Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's lovely to see you. I'm just going to put the technology on, um, otherwise I won't be able to see anything. And you look even better with the technology on. So uh, we're going to start straight in with something, and then I'll give you some explanation afterwards. so quite some long time, um, collected that particular version by Cecil Sharp uh, from Somerset, and um, you'll probably know it from Maddie Pryor, who sings it obviously very differently to me, um, but she described the lyrics as cynical and spiteful. I thought that was perhaps a bit harsh. Anyway, there we are. Um, our next song is uh, about wild geese, but not the feathered variety. Um, Shularoon is a lament, and it's sung by an Irish girl, and she's sitting at her spinning wheel. So it was lovely seeing the people outside with their, their spinning wheels. And she's anticipating her young love going off to France to fight. And during the 17th and 18th centuries, the Catholic French were very sympathetic to the Irish cause. And there was a lot of smuggling going on between France and Ireland. And um, so various things like recruits, illicit recruits, were uh, taken from Ireland over to France and they were called in the cargo logs wild geese to put uh, people off the scent. So that these um, military people became popularly, popularly known as wild geese. So in this song the girl is lamenting that she will have to sell all she has to finance selling, selling her love to war and buying him a sword. And at one point she's thinking, but that will leave me penniless so I might have to dye my petticoats red and sell myself. So it's, it's quite a tough song, really. The interesting thing about it, it's got a mixture of English verses and a Gaelic chorus, and that's a form known as macronic, which was a completely new uh, thing to me. And it was characteristic in 19th century Ireland when you couldn't speak Gaelic and there was predominantly English spoken. So although it's a very early song, maybe 17th century, it was put into this form much later on. So the Gaelic chorus, Shularoon, means walk, walk, walk my love, walk steadily, walk softly, walk to the door and elope with me. And the final line, which she says in a wistful way, and may you go safely, my darling. And if you listen to Mark's accompaniment, you'll hear the spinning wheel. Thank you. 
about somebody staying and sitting and staying put while her partner went and roamed. Um, almost the reverse of this, actually. This is about a man, or, or a, a, written by a man who spent his entire life on tour. Um, and like most of the pieces I'm going to play tonight, uh, today, they're by Caroline, or Caroline, the uh, famous Irish harper who died in 1722 or so. He spent his life on tour, as I say, returning often to the house where he was looked after, Alderford House in Ireland. And um, I had a call one day, uh, I was at home, and somebody found me on YouTube, I thought this call of it had an international number, and I thought, it was obviously somebody trying to sell me, you know, double glazing or something like that. <laughs> and after sort of trying to work out this impenetrable accent, um, and he was probably having the same problem with me, I'm sure, um, it turned out to be the guy who owned or lived in Alderford House now, where Caroline used to live, who is a farmer, and he said that one of the things during this long conversation that he discovered about taking over the house was that there were bottles everywhere. They were jammed into the walls, you know, all drink bottles. And, and they, his, his cattle were cutting their hooves on them. So he had to build, dig big pits and bury the bottles. And that sounds like Caroline all over because he was famously um, very, very fond of the drop or 12. <laughs> and this particular piece, in fact, actually at some stage in his life, he went to a doctor and he was really worried about his health and um, went to a doctor who said, well, basically, you've got to stop drinking. Um, even in those days, it was wise to get a second opinion, though. So he went to another doctor <laughs> called Dr. John Stafford, and we know his, this, this name because he calls this piece Caroline's Receipt, presumably meaning receipt or thank you or prescription or whatever, um, or Dr. John Stafford. Um, and I love the piece because it reminds me, it's sort of the melody reminds me of church bells and in the celebration of being allowed to drink, and there's a little amen at the end of it. So Dr. John Stafford or Caroline's receipt. <laughs> about um, sort of the girl going off to sea and dressing up as a, as a boy. And apparently that's a common sailor's dream that they'll find a girl among the crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been an interesting song to reflect on. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the consequences from the girl's perspective are, are pretty grim, really. But the sailors find it comic. Um, so it was quite interesting to sort of think about modern parallels around that. Um, Kate Bush sings a version of this, and she sings it very much as a lament, but ours is quite some um, sort of up-tempo. That doesn't mean that we agree with the sentiments, but just a good word. A 
cheeks they were like roses and her hair hung in a curl. The sailors often smiled and said he looked just like a girl. But eating of the captain's biscuit or colour did destroy. And the wasted swell of pretty nail for handsome cabin boy. Twas in the bay of Biscay, our gallant ship did plough. A night among the sailors was a fearful flurry and row. They tumbled from their hammocks, for their sleep it did destroy. And they swore about the groaning of the handsome cabin boy. arrangements of these, didn't they? We, yeah. just, we just met and came up with all these. So much fun. Yeah. But I have to say, in, in Mark's uh, honour, as it were, that he's amazing because I just sing a tune and then this sort of wonderful accompaniment will emerge. So it's all down to him. <laughs> um, but this next one is a completely different kettle of fish because it's, uh, it's very sad and a lament. Um, we've called it Sailor Boy, um, but it goes under numerous titles that you might be familiar with. So, Father, Father, build me a boat. Captain, Captain, tell me true. The sailor's trade is a weary life. So you can see that it's sort of not going to be a, a bundle of fun, really. Um, it's, uh, they think it started life towards the end of the 18th century. And there's a huge variety of collected texts, which indicates a very long uh, oral tradition. And uh, in some versions, the lost lover is a soldier, in some he's a sailor. Uh, but in all cases, the lady hears of his death from a passing ship. Sailor boy. <clears throat>
right from the other end of Carolan's life. I mentioned he went back to Alderford House, and that's where he died, um, with the, um, in the care of the McDermott Row household, who had looked after him um, pretty much all his life. He was, he was blind, which is a point that might become relevant later on in this programme. Um, but he, uh, he is said to have called for his harp and written this piece, which has become known as Carolan's Farewell to Music. I first discovered this, actually, when I put another thing on YouTube and somebody said, do you know Caroline's Farewell to Music? And I thought, no, I've never heard of it. Um, looking into it and finding the story, it seems such a poignant story, really. Somebody who spends his entire life in the service of music and then has to say goodbye to it, really. Um, and uh, he, and so I, I because of, because of the strength of the, the, you know, the importance and the emotion associated with that, I, spent, I lived with it a year with this really strange melody. I mean, it really makes no sense when you first hear it. But um, I hope I've done it justice with an accompaniment that uh, fits it. Um, so, Caroline's Farewell to Music. which is a very traditional uh, English song, English, uh, British and Irish song actually, that warns young, warns young girls against taking a false lover, so beware. Um, and 
each, in each verse there's a reference to different plants and uh, herbs and things, and they've all got a sort of um, double meaning, if you like, which will become clear, I think, as we go through the song. Um, and then the second one, we, I don't think we can run them quite all together, can we? Because there's, there's probably lever changes to do. Um, possibly go wrong. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is Scarborough Fair. <laughs> You'll not be familiar. Well, I thought I was familiar with Scarborough mm. Fair, but when I started researching it a little bit, there was kind of more to it than met the eye, really. So this whole ballad is all about impossible tasks. And the one lover asking the other one to do something impossible, and then the other lover saying, ah, oh, yes, but you've got to do so-and-so. So, and, so. so um, and in the early forms of this ballad, um, the elfin knight posed the tasks to be answered by a maiden. Um, so she doesn't appear in this version, but anyway, that's where it came from. And um, on Google, which is the source of all um, information, somebody thinks that Parsley, Saint Rose, Mary and Time is a sort of incantation against the elfin suitor. So who knows? Anyway, um, so we're starting with let no man steal your time and if nothing goes wrong, we'll do Scarborough Fair. <laughs>
I mentioned earlier on that Carolan was blind. It's thought he was blinded by smallpox at around the age of 18, which uh, smallpox was quite a, you know, a, a disease that you was quite prevalent in those days. And so he spent his life being led around on horseback by people who also notated his tunes and generally looked after him. But one day he met somebody on the road, so the story goes, who said, are you O'Carolan? He said, yes. I'm, he said, I'm afraid to tell you that your great friend, um, Charles McCabe, has died. Um, and he's, he's been buried um, in the local churchyard. And they took Carolan to the grave and they placed his hands on the mounds of fresh soil. And Carolan was desperately upset by this and wrote a lament for Charles McCabe, which, um, which he plays in front of his friends. And this is the lament for Charles McCabe. <laughs> Jokes, but on this occasion, after playing that piece, apparently Charles McCabe himself popped out and said, Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I you might not be able to see from the back, but um, certainly during that piece, Mark was making a leader change during the, the course of the piece, which I can assure you is very difficult to do. Mm. <laughs> sort of gentle um, percussion accompaniment on the knees to this one. So this is an outlandish night, um, and Cecil Sharp uh, believe this to be the most widely circulated of all folk ballads, apparently. Outlandish meaning coming from beyond the northern border, i.e. Scotland. So there's lots of versions of this. Uh, lots involve elf knights and water sprites and uh, talking parrots and all sorts, but else um, doesn't involve those. Uh, but there we are, an outlandish night coming from the Northland, so we'll, we'll, we'll get going. And if you want to kind of do a bit of that... Horsiness. Horsiness, yes, lots of horses. <laughs> Cut away the scrambles to shine. 
very quick piece called um, Sir Arthur Shane. Um, Sir Arthur Shane, Shane, S-H-A-E, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, he was the Sheriff of Roscommon. And the only other thing I can find out about Sir Arthur Shane is actually from the music itself, because it's an unusual tune <coughs> in that it actually misses out the last piece of each bar. So this is odd silence. So I think Sir Arthur Shane may have had a bit of a characteristic Lindy Walk or something. No <laughs> idea. Anyway, here's Sir Arthur Shane. It's called um, Searching for Lambs, um, and it's, I have to say, it's one of our favourites. And it was one of Cecil Sharp's favourites as well. He kept going to visit a Mrs. Sweet in Somerset um, to collect this song. So I don't know if it was Mrs. Sweet or the song. Anyway, hey, um, uh, we, we love it. Um, and with any luck, all being well with the following wind, it'll yeah. go straight into... Yeah, so they... Uh, no, a polka thingy. Oh, a, a polka, polka. Yeah, like, yes, yeah, polka. Yeah. yes, finish. A finish polska, which we were going to finish with. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so we were going to finish it. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. yes. This is also in 5 4. They're both oh, in yes, 5 times. Four, yes, yes. Which unusual. is a really difficult key, yeah. 5 4. Difficult times we live in. <laughs>
Just. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen any other musician <laughs> desperately on stage. I haven't seen any here either. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we actually haven't um, sung this one for ages, so everything could go wrong. Anyway, it's, it's called Sauve, um, and it's another kind of cross-dressing thing with lots of galloping, so, uh, you know, do all it's that. It's got everything this song, really. Yeah, we'll whistle on that. <laughs> slips of paper and find a QR code so you can photograph or just take one. Um, I've also got some CDs, limited edition CDs of, of, of something I recorded many years ago of some more Carolan. Um, there's only about eight left, although there's another 6,000 at home. <laughs> <laughs> and the 10 pounds each was a lot cheaper than Amazon chains. So. <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>